Welcome to Educate Cayman. I have Dr. Bill Rudy here with me of the UCCI Observatory, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about what he's doing here with his lovely telescopes. Good morning. How are you? Well, I thought today, uh, since the sun is around all the time, we should talk about the sun. So that will exclude the large telescope and bring us over to our fancy sun telescope. I think everyone is aware that you should never look at the sun without special filtration which yeah, can damage your eyes. That would be bad. <laughs> never look at it with a small telescope or binoculars or anything of that sort. But in the last several years or decades, um, special solar telescopes have become available and their prices are such that the average amateur or small observatories can afford to buy them. They're called Hydrogen One Alpha Solar Scopes. The okay. reason for that is that they take a very small sliver of the spectrum in the red area and a particular line that's called Hydrogen One Alpha and they pass through something like a half of an angstrom which is so narrow that uh, it's useless for an angstrom. Angstrom, that's, that's small, teeny, very uh, teeny. Okay. <laughs> and then um, the, the special filter in the, uh, in, in the uh, telescope, in conjunction with a CCD camera, and the capture software that we have on the computer screen allows us to capture images of the sun. And so everybody knows it's a little yellow ball that goes across the sky, but most people probably don't know that there's all sorts of features that you can see. You can see on the image here, we've got little dark things and a sunspot and some lighter areas. And it's possible with this setup to capture those and create really striking images. So we're taking a video file of that image, which will consist of 100 still frames all linked together, and it's got them. So what we do is take those and put them into another package of software, which we'll just fire up here for a second. There we go. So that's the uh, video sequence that we just took. Okay. And we're going to use this software, which is able to take each of the 100 individual frames, define reference points on them, shift them around and stack them on top of each other so that you'll get perfect registration and get a, a much better or enhanced image. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll tell it to, to set these points and it generates these little red dots or points that are going to be used for registration. We don't need all of them, so I cut them back a little bit. And we tell it, go ahead and align, sort of get them roughly put together. And you can see down here it's counting up. We're about 45%, 57, 61. Eventually, in a second or two, we'll have that part all done. Kaboom, it's done. And then we tell it to limit and get rid of those that, that we don't want, okay. uh, the, the, the poorer quality. And it's going to take the remaining better images or just the best ones the best ones we told it to take the 20 percent so out of the 100 we're only going to use 20 20 in the okay final thing. now here's where the real magic comes these are called wavelet functions now if you look at that image it's kind of fuzzy mm -hmm. uh, it's not crisp and clean but watch what happens when i come along and slide that over Look at the difference in That's this crazy. segment there compared to the side. And you and can see more detail. Oh, absolutely. You can just see I mean, stuff that you'd never be able to see otherwise. Look at that. That's a sunspot? Yeah, that's a sunspot there. This is called a filament. What it is is a flame arching out from the surface of the sun. So it's coming towards you. So, you, uh, so what we can do is there's you know, this is where the art comes in, and everyone that does this kind of thing will probably come up with a slightly different picture, but I'd be pretty happy with that one. So even though that's only occurred in that small segment, we can tell it to do the whole picture, and kaboom, there it is. That's crazy. Isn't that great? And that's the sun, like, a minute ago. That's right, exactly. Now, we could, there's many more fine-tuning things that we can do to it. I just want to demonstrate one which will be putting a little artificial color into it. 
this isn't the one I ordinarily use, but I want you to know that it is possible to do that here. So now we've got a green sun. Let's just shift that down a little bit. Now we've got sort of a yellow sun or a bit of an orangey. We could probably settle for that. But there's a better way of doing this, so we're not going to, not going to use that one. Now, we go to a Photoshop or a photo editing kind of program. So that was what we just finished tuning up with our, with our last piece of software. Let's make it colored. Well, in fact, before we do that, let's just sharpen it up a little bit. Uh, so we can do that. See how it becomes a little nice. crisper? Nice. And then, uh, there are, as I say, there's many fine things you can do with it, but let's just add a little bit of color. And this is just an arbitrary amount. We could fiddle with that and change the hue and the saturation, but we'll accept that for a start because where it's really going to change is when we come to changing gamma correction. So oh, that looks the, exactly like the sun now. Yeah, exactly, but we can play with it. We can make it more ready and dark. We can make it a little bit lighter and sort of washed out. That's no good. And you can just fiddle around and just get the right combination until you're happy with that image. And let's suppose we were happy there, arbitrarily. Uh, so we'll say fine to that. Now, one of the neat things you can do, you might say, well, what would it look like if it was a negative image, if you reversed all the colors to something mm -hmm. different? So the blacks turn white. That's right. Okay. And, and the reds would turn to their complementary color, which would be, be in this case, like blues. Like, that's right. So that's what uh, a lot of people like to play with that because it's just a different way of looking. Because really what you're looking at are shapes and features. So whether they're in black and white, or whether they're in color, it doesn't really matter. So we can undo that and go back to our color. And as I say, there's a host of other things. You can play with the contrast, the brightness. You can add text into it, like for example, uh, there's a picture I did earlier, so we put a label on it so I know the date and what features were included in the picture. And that's solar astrophotography in, in the 21st century. All right. And it's cheaper now so that everybody can do it, you say? Well, okay. If you're going to get um, an entry-level hydrogen alpha telescope, it set you back about $700. And they're pretty 700 functional. Oh, yeah. Which is, uh, that might seem like a lot of money for a telescope that is very specialized for using for only one purpose, looking at the sun. And then if you want to add a camera for about 200 you could add an inexpensive camera that would mm -hmm. give you not bad images. We bought one of these a number of months ago and I played with it for a long time, but it was just too frustrating. You couldn't get exactly what you wanted, so we broke the bank and got the $700. <laughs> and that's what we're using here. And, and you can contract. actually see it's better now, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if I show you images that we had taken with our old system, uh, the contrast between the two is so striking. Uh, and then we added something else. Uh, well, first of all, our solar scope is about $2,500. Yeah, only $2,500. Uh, you know, that's the price <laughs> of a used car. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and it has one, uh, one uh, uh, hydrogen alpha filter, but you can do something called double stacking. And you can get another filter and you can put the two together. Mm -hmm. And so, whereas before you might have admitted the bandpass was 0.7 of an angstrom, now it's down to less than 0.5. And that's what allows us to bring up this exquisite detail. I mean, you'd never think there were all those little things happening on the sun. I didn't know. It. Oh, yeah. So, I'm quite fascinated by this. I spent hours, I've probably done thousands of pictures, just trying to get, you know, work my way through the learning curve. And I think we're to the point now where um, I'm willing to upload some of these to some of the websites and not feel too embarrassed. But, <laughs> and yet there are some people that are so good at it. This looks but pretty good to me. It's not bad for, for a start. It's for a start. <laughs> and this is the final image of the sun that we ended up with. Big thank you to Dr. Bill Rudy for allowing us to come to his observatory and teaching us more about solar astrophotography. If you liked the video, please click subscribe and stay tuned for more Educate Cayman videos.